Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you are listening to The Daily Dose. And today I wanted to share a conversation I had with some new clients, awesome, awesome couple. They're challenged, just like everybody else, by the increase in rent that they've seen over the last three years, and they're super frustrated. They didn't take advantage of the rental moratorium. These people paid their bills all through COVID, and they feel honestly mistreated by their landlord because a lot of their neighbors weren't paying their rent. But this couple paid their rent the entire time. They were both, um, what did we call them, essential workers. So they stayed fully employed during COVID and paid their bills. And now they feel a little mistreated because they're getting significant rent increases along with everybody else. And they feel like, you know, the landlords, and, and rightfully so in some cases, are making up for lost revenue because, you know, they weren't able to collect rent during the moratoriums. They weren't able to evict, but most landlords still had to to pay the the bills on their property so they were losing significant money each month while still having to pay their own bills taxes servicing the note, insurances, all of that. But anyway, that's a whole nother story, probably several episodes. I probably could do an entire show on why rents are increasing, but I, this is the part I wanted to share. We looked at their current monthly rental amount and determined by what they're comfortable paying, they're able to purchase a property that's valued about $425,000. Here's where the conversation got interesting. The husband is a news junkie. He follows the headlines super, super, smart guy. His question to me was, where do we think appreciation is going to settle to? Because we all agree it's going to slow. And at the lower appreciation rate, does buying now still make sense? Now, anytime you can buy something that appreciates and doesn't depreciate, I think it makes sense as long as you can afford it. But we looked at that $425,000 property and we looked at a bunch of economic forecasts. Some were his, some were mine. We determined that, you know, we're going to be somewhere in a four to eight percent appreciation cycle depending on which forecasts you put any weight into. Let's use 5%, right? Let's be conservative. And and who knows? It may be three. I don't know, but it may be eight. So we picked five. So if they purchased the property for $425,000 in one year at 5% appreciation, it'll be worth $446,000. Yeah, you know, $21,000, that doesn't sound sexy compared to, you know, the, the doubling of values that we've seen in such a short period of time recently, but let's play it out over a five-year span. So after year two, that property would be worth $468,500. And these are round numbers. If you do the math, you're going to see I'm off a hair, but I'm rounding down for argument's sake. After year three, $491,990. So 492 grand. Now we're starting to pick up a little bit of steam. After year four, 516,000 and change. And after year five, $542,000. So over $100,000 in appreciation in five short years based on a relatively conservative appreciation rate of 5%. We looked at each other straight in the eye and I asked, can you save $100,000 $100,000 in the next five years by cutting out Starbucks, by you, let's let's call it for what it is, by Dave Ramsey in your way to an extra hundred grand. The honest answer is no. But with a 5% appreciation rate on a $425,000 house in five short years, you've put $100,000 in equity to the plus column for your retirement plan. Even in a relatively boring appreciation rate of 5%, you can see that significant equity wealth can be created in a relatively short period of time by doing nothing more than going home and paying your monthly bills. You don't have to skip Starbucks. You don't have to forego the vacation. You don't have to drop your Netflix account. Assuming that you qualify for the mortgage, and these people did based on their current rate of consumption and their current monthly debt load, they could easily slide into this $425,000 house without interrupting their lifestyle and put a hundred grand in the equity column in five short years. So, so I just wanted to share that because I do believe there's still opportunity in ownership. And even if appreciation was to go to zero, 
principal reduction is going to build equity each month. You know, every month that you pay your bill, you owe slightly less. So I share all that just to keep you encouraged. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call. Reach out to me. Shoot me a text, an email, a DM on Facebook. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And if you found any of this interesting or encouraging, please share the show. If you have any friends or family or, you know, people you work with who are thinking, is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? I've got mortgage questions. Who should I call? Please introduce them to my team and I. Share the show with them. We'll be happy to answer any, any of their questions. So, And don't forget to check out the Facebook page. Go to Facebook and search The Mr. Mortgage Show. There's a ton of data we post every day to the Facebook page. You can go to the podcast page if you want to find the library of replays. Go to the Mr. Mortgage Show.com or Mr. Mortgage Radio.com. So again, My name is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you've been listening to The Daily Dose. We'll talk again tomorrow. Thanks.